name is Jewel Jackson, and uh, my students call me Mama Jewel or Sister Jewel because of my culture. My classes are constructed, um, they start with a history lesson because in order to do African dance, you have to know a bit about Africa and the people because each step is connected to the African culture. Our societal values, beliefs, um, spiritual systems, uh, things that we celebrate like a harvest or a baby being born. We have to place a context on what we're going to dance. Three, four, five, From there, we move into a warm-up, and I have live drummers, and in our warm-up, each part of the body is activated. Each part of the body is warmed up so that you can really have that full uh, experience and that full kinesthetic um, expression. From there, we move into the actual movements that are uh, the primary movements of each particular rhythm, because each rhythm has its own dance, and each dance goes with its own rhythm. So when you hear a certain rhythm, you know it's time for this dance, which also means it's time for this celebration. Uh, so people have to understand what that is. So we teach all of that. We teach where the breaks are, how to listen to the drummers, how to identify the different sounds and the polyrhythmic structure, uh, because that's an art in and of itself, uh, because there's so many different things happening with the music. You have to begin to understand what the rhythm is saying, when the rhythm is saying five, six, seven, start, five, six, seven, change to a new step, and five, six, seven, stop. Um, so we teach all of that in a class. Uh, all of that's basically constructed so that people get the full experience of what the dance is, why people do this dance, why this dance is important for them. We don't do ooga booga dance, we do dances for our culture, and this is uh, basically an oral history. This is a way of preserving culture outside of a book. Um, it's a live experience that actually passes down generations and generations of lived experiences, values, and belief systems. So that's how we teach. Before taking West African dance with Sister Jewel, I expected um, only learning a new aesthetic, which I was really excited for. I was expecting to learn a little bit of, about the African culture, but I feel that now uh, Sister Jill has just implemented so much knowledge into my head, and I feel that I have grown so much in the technique as well, and the aesthetic. Um, I am really thankful for Sister Jill because she really watches out for her students, and had, I feel that she has been there for me. are specific and the rhythms are a language, the movements are a language, but then there's the actual vocal language. So in order to properly express it, you have to sing the song that accompanies it, whether the song is calling everyone together or asking to have the crops blessed or asking for blessings for this little baby or for this new marriage, we have to speak the language. So um, we teach the song as well as the dance and the music. Uh, we also teach words like how to say thank you in Wola or in Mandinka. Just little things to, so that people can get a chance to just express that different culture um, in the same way that they express their culture and see the similarities. So the song for the dance that we uh, learned in this class, which is the dance that I historically do for beginners because it's an excellent rhythm, it's a 4-4 four -four rhythm, very easy movements to catch. At the end of the class, people feel like, I can get this. Obviously, we have some very dynamic and difficult movements and very difficult uh, steps, but I don't like to start with that because I like to empower my students and make sure that they feel um, that they have the self-efficacy that they can you know, be successful in this class. So the dance that I like to start with, kind of my African dance 101 class is called Kuku. Kuku is a harvest dance from Guinea, West Africa. And again, it's a 4-4 four -four rhythm, very easy to follow the steps. There are some combinations in there, but it's something that most people can catch after some repetition. Um, so the song is, Aye Kuku
Um, well, Sister Jewel is truly an exemplary person. Um, she, apart from being an experienced teacher, and uh, just has a vibrant personality, and um, she has a gift of bringing people together. Um, and she's especially an asset to um, the dance world, which can often be a colonized term, in my opinion. Um, like a lot of the dances that we study as dancers is um, have Eurocentric roots, and so the way that Sister Jewel brings um, Afrocentric movement, um, and not saying this is African dance because that's an entire continent full of thousands and thousands of tribal dance forms. Um, so it's it's really an amazing thing to um, experience someone who has studied um, in an anthropological sense these dance of different people and really cares about people and their culture and their language and really understands the fact that dance is a reflection of culture and it's not something to just be messed around with in, um, in an appropriation sense. Um, so it's really inspirational to have someone like that, especially in an environment that can often be um, exclusive um, so yeah she has truly a gift of bringing people together building community through um, their dance and showing us cultural roots um, so yeah she's really an inspirational person so one thing that I got out of this class was the, the excitement level Sister Jewel she's so passionate and insightful she always like is 100 straight up with you and I love that about her the tenacity of her her spirit it just allows me to bring that 100% when I come to the dance class as well and I appreciate it for that. So the biggest uh, takeaway that I hope that my students have is that one Africa is the birthplace of civilization two Africa is a continent comprised of over 50 different countries in addition comprised of over 2,000 500 different nationalities, each with their own language, their own customs, their own cultures. So although we just touched the tip of the iceberg learning cuckoo, we could be doing sabar from Senegal, we could be doing boot dance from South Africa. There's myriad dances, 2,500 different ways to say a baby is being born and let's celebrate. 2,500 different ways to say, you know, let's come together because it's harvest time or Thanksgiving as we would call it here. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge abyss. It's just, you know, almost an abysmal amount of material that we can cover and that we can learn. But this is just an exploration. And I think uh, it piques the interest to understand the birthplace of humanity and also the interconnectedness of all of us. That's also something that's very important that people can see others as they see themselves. Our skin may be different, our genders may be different, our lifestyles may be different, but we're all human beings and we all have African blood within each of us. And if we can begin to see the things that we have uh, that are more similar, then maybe that can begin to sewage some of the things that we have that are different and we can begin to have conversations with each other. So the way that we end our class is actually with a cultural festival and feast. That's what we're doing today and people brought in foods from their cultures, foods from their heritage. So we have people um, who are from Spain or people from different places all over the world who are bringing in the dishes that they love and that they grew up with and that they traditionally eat and sharing that with each other. And that's the purpose of this class, to bring people together around dance, around culture, and food.